In this video, I copper coat this hammerhead and put a handle on it. This is the hammer. Uh, I already took out the broken piece of handle that was in there. I just drilled it and hammered that out. I started with putting in the blast cabinet and I put my GoPro in there so you could see kind of what was going on. It's glass beads in there. I was having a hard time getting to all the different sides of it so I just pulled it out and used my glove to hold it and as I blasted it. Next thing I took it out of the cabinet and you can see it cleaned it up really nice. It had some, like a make model on it, but I couldn't really make it out. I had some burrs and some rough areas, so I put it on my belt grinder, and I think that's like a 40 or 50 grit belt. It's really aggressive. But I just kind of touched a couple spots with that, and I moved to, uh, I think it was a 220 belt after that, and here's the 220 to kind of polish it up. Careful not to get the side where it had the markings on it. The spots where I couldn't really get with the belt, I used my air die grinder and a sanding disc on it with I believe a 50 grit sanding disc, maybe 60, and touched up the areas. I'm trying to get some of the scratch marks out, but I didn't want to make it perfect since this was going to be a tool I'd be using. There's my glove and some sparks flying. <laughs> it wasn't a good angle. You can see that from a, using the different grits and different angles, it's got a lot of scratch marks in it. I put it back in my blast cabinet and blended the texture in, and I'm really happy with the way it blended it. It came out pretty well. The next step was to coat it. I used a muriatic acid and that's water. That's just tap water. I think it's three parts tap water to one part muriatic acid. I used a mason jar because it had the measuring marks on it. And I could seal it up so I could put the lid on it and know it would be secure. I labeled the jar and I also labeled the lid too. I have an adjustable power supply that I use for this. That's a glass stir rod that I'm just using to mix it all up. That's a piece of copper pipe I drilled a hole in and put some wire through. I'm hooking that up to the positive. To the negative, I hook up the part I'm going to be coating. It's important that the parts don't touch. I had some baking soda there just in case I got some acid on me. I ended up ripping my gloves once too. As you can see by the baking soda, there's a glove there that I somehow snagged and got a hole in. Now I started off with too many amps and volts. I think a lot of people I've seen online have used like different power supplies for like a USB. So it's just a couple amps and a couple volts. This gave me some adjustment and I was able to tweak a tune and play with it and see how it adjusted the amps and volts. It kind of added more but a really kind of a dullish color. I wanted to make sure it wasn't touching the side. So I stirred it frequently and kind of moved it around. And I used that stir rod a lot. I have it for about five minutes on that side. And then I decided to as I was stirring as the bubbles would start to build up, just so it wasn't stopping any of the coating. And after about, I think it was five minutes, I would switch it. That should be coming up here. Yep. Shut it off just to be safe. And moved it so that the copper was on the other side.
Just trying to get an even coat as possible. And I ran that for another five minutes. Stirring as the bubbles would build up. I think this I had turned up the volts or amps on it. And that's why it's making a lot of bubbles. It puts it on thicker, but it's really kind of a dull finish. After five minutes each side, I would take it out and still wool it all really good. Uh, level it out. Any high spots would get it, come off. Kind of brighten and shiny everything up. And I did that. The, you know, five minutes each side and then cleaned it with steel wool three times. And I was playing with the amps and voltage the whole time. actually made a pretty durable finish. I was impressed with how durable it has been. And it filled in some of the really small cracks and scratches. Actually, I guess it's more of a scratch than a crack. The inside, I didn't really worry with about where the handle goes in. People won't see that. And that's after it's coated. I just rinse it off with water, and that's the handle I'm going to put in it. The handle was a little bit bigger, so I used a rasp and file to get it down to size. It didn't take much at all, though. It went really quick. You can see how much material I'm moving right there. Once I got it to fit, I did the defying gravity move, and... He hold it up and hit the the handle, and instead of the head coming off, it moves its way up. This is a really neat thing if you haven't done this before. You can see how quick it's moving up right there. And actually, it's shaving off some of the wood as it gets tighter in there. More peeled it back than shaved it. So what I did is I cleaned it up with a knife where it peeled it back there. This handle came with a wood wedge and a metal wedge. The wood wedge was wider than the handle. I had to uh, trim it with the chisel there. And there's not much of a gap, but it fit in there. Once it gets started, I just hammer it in. I hammered until it bottomed out and the top started mushrooming. That's about as tight it was going to go right there. I'm just smashing it at that point. I used a flush cut saw to cut it off. Careful not to get into the copper finish too much. And just trim it off so it's flush. I couldn't cut straight partly because I was worried about getting into that copper. I didn't want to dig into it because that would have scratched it up and been an eyesore there. So I used a file to touch it up. The metal one I put the opposite direction. And there's no crack or slot or anything. You just hammer into the wood kind of like a nail going in. And it splits the wood as it goes in and tightens it up. Keep that wedge in there. Once I got it down to a certain point, I used a punch to drive it the rest of the way flush. Now you can see kind of on the handle right here, there was some sticky stuff that's kind of black looking. And that's from the sticker they had on it. It also had some kind of finish on the handle already. What I did is I uh, decided to take sandpaper and do a lot of sanding on it. I 
didn't sand the copper. I just wanted to hit the wood. And there's not much in the video, but I did a lot more than what's shown. And I was building up with that sticky glue stuff. And time for the old sock. So I keep all my socks with holes in them. And I cut them up and use them for staining or finishing. That's boiled linseed oil. And I went ahead and put two or three coats. I put it on and then 24 hours later I put another one on. So I'd rub it in really well. I was trying to get a thick coat on there. I went over the copper and everything. I was hoping if I cover the copper it'll keep it from turning green. Which so far it looks like it has helped with that. And that's the finish. It's drying there. This is the action shot. So I'm hammering in a nail. Thanks for watching. Bye.